Wayne Rooney, it's a name that strikes fear into the hearts of any defenders he faces. A powerhouse performer with immense strength and a thunderbolt shot. Having been called upon on many occasions for his clinical finishing skills, Wayne Rooney has earned his reputation as one of the game's most complete modern day forwards. Born October 24, 1985 in Liverpool, England, to parents of Irish descent, Thomas Wayne and Jeanette Marie Rooney, Wayne grew up in Croxted one of the country's most deprived housing estates, supporting local club Everton FC. Well, I did see him here playing football in the garden with, uh, I think it must have been one of his brothers. And uh, I was doing the garden and the next thing he had such a crash. When I looked up, the ball had gone through his mum's window. So I bet she wasn't happy about that. <laughs> but she'll have forgiven him now, won't she? <laughs> Even at an early age, both Wayne's commitment and talent were clear and caught the eye of football scout Bob Pendleton. His game in question, like picking a ball, always seemed to find space, always seemed to have a lot of time on the ball. And his use of the ball, even at such a young age, was something um, that once I'd seen, I had one thing in mind, that was to take him into Everton Football Club. Rooney began his career with Everton, joining their youth team and signing on schoolboy terms at the age of just 10. Having scored eight goals in as many games and after scoring in an FA Cup youth match, he quickly progressed through the ranks. Wayne Rooney was nothing short of a revelation, despite being still only 16 years old. These boys have been your heroes for many years, haven't they? Now you're one of them. What does it mean to you to, to be out there and be staying here for some years to come? Um, can't, can't explain it. It just feels in my life. Did you want to go to another club? <laughs> no. <laughs> there were concerns about pressure at such a young age. We've tried to protect Wayne the best we possibly can, uh, off the field and on the field as well, and we'll continue to try and do so. Rooney's teenage years at Goodison Park produced many first-class achievements including scoring a last-minute match-winning goal against reigning league champions Arsenal in October 2002, just five days before his 17th birthday, making Rooney the then youngest goal scorer in Premier League history. Despite his considerable success with Everton, it seemed the brighter lights were calling, and at the end of the 2003-2004 season, citing Everton's inability to challenge for European competition, Rooney requested a transfer. For the player who declared once a blue, always a blue, evident fans were not happy. After lengthy negotiations, Manchester United outbid Newcastle United and Rooney signed with the Red Devils in August 2004. It was the highest fee ever paid to a player under 20. People say I play with art, um, and to me that means, you know, I think they, they see the work, the work effort I put into to the football and, you know, work hard. Um, and tight on 10% each game, I think, um, you know, you've got to do that and um, I think the fans see that and appreciate that. With his growing profile at Manchester United and his contribution at Old Trafford, the media scrutiny was becoming more focused. Yeah, he's had an interrupted season, but again, I think because it's Wayne Rooney, people do make a bigger, bigger meal out of it, I think. I think uh, he brings a lot more to a team than just goals. Um, he brings other people into the game, um, he can set up scoring opportunities and his work rate is up there with the, with the best of them. So well, if, if he's not scoring goals, I'm, I'm sure many defenders still don't like playing against him. Apart from scoring a hat-trick on debut for United, Rooney was selected for Euro 2004 and became one of the stars of the tournament. His first goal against Switzerland made him the youngest goal scorer in European Championship history. However, the run was short-lived and ended against Portugal in the quarter-finals, with the striker suffering a metatarsal injury. Back on home soil, Wayne was happy to be surrounded by great teammates. Especially Cristiano, he's, um, he's winning games on his own. This season he's, um, he's been unbelievable and you know, I think um, at the minute he's by far the best player in the world. And, you know, um, hopefully he can work some of his magic and, you know, um, 
get it into the semi-finals. A naturally gifted player who can play many positions on the pitch, Rudy's career as a youngster at Man U continued to flourish under the close guidance of Sir Alex Ferguson. He began his debut performance against Fenerbahce playing out wide and was later asked to play in the centre, leaving the Turkish side stunned with his hat-trick in a 6-2 win. He also played a key role in the 2006 League Cup win over Wigan Athletic, contributing over half the goals in a decisive 4-0 victory and being named Man of the Match. He wore the captain's armband for the Red Devils for the first time in October 2006 in a European clash against FC Copenhagen. His ability to not only score goals, but also provide plenty of opportunities for teammates to get themselves on the score sheet shows maturity beyond his years. An impressive club career to date includes 17 goals from 77 appearances for Everton in the 2002-2003 and 2003-2004 seasons, along with 253 appearances for Manchester United, resulting in 105 goals since signing in 2004. Rooney became the youngest player to play for England when he earned his first cap in a friendly against Australia on February 12, 2003, at 17, the same age in which he also became the youngest player to score an England goal. His first tournament action was at Euro 2004, where he was also briefly the youngest scorer in competition history, scoring twice against Switzerland on June 17, 2004. This record was topped only four days later by Swedish midfielder Johan von Thalen. Rooney's appearance record as the youngest player for England was also broken by 36 days by Arsenal youngster Theo Walcott in June 2006. His days at Old Trafford have overshadowed earlier bitterness by his fans at the decision to leave Everton and every appearance is greeted by a chanting army, almost justifying the 33 million euro transfer fee. Rooney's selection for England's 2006 World Cup squad was almost a foregone conclusion. However, following another foot injury in an April Premier League match, there was serious doubt about his fitness. I should be absolutely crazy if I didn't pick uh, one room when we still think it's a possibility that he will play the World Cup. England tried to hasten his recovery using an oxygen tent, which allowed Rooney to enter a group match against Trinidad and Tobago and start the next match against Sweden. Sven-Goran Eriksson was still optimistic. He will have a scan on Thursday, and after that scan we will hopefully know uh, more or less when he's ready. Uh, I know he's working very well. We are in contact with him and uh, the doctors, of course, regularly, and he's doing very well. Despite the intense efforts, Rooney did not regain match fitness in time and went scoreless as England once again bowed out on penalty kicks. Rooney received a red card for stomping on defender Ricardo Carvalho in the quarterfinal against Portugal, causing teammate Cristiano Ronaldo to openly protest his actions, which developed into a scuffle. The incident was given extensive coverage and it was predicted that Ronaldo would leave Manchester United as he and Rooney's relationship had soured and they would no longer be able to play together. Nothing of that sort happened. My relationship with him is great and I think after uh, the, this, I think I'm more mature. I, le I learn a lot with this and now I'm, I feel very good. I feel, I feel, feel good. In the World Cup qualifiers, England had topped their group to get to Germany in 2006 and had done it the hard way, leaving it to the last day for a must win against Poland after a surprise defeat at the hands of Northern Ireland. With Rooney still recovering from a metatarsal injury and in spite of England not playing at their best, they made the last 16 by defeating Paraguay and Trinidad and Tobago in their first two games. England's third match saw a 2-2 draw with Sweden, enough to top the group and bypass hosts Germany in the next round. After defeating Ecuador, England faced Portugal in the quarterfinals and were defeated in a penalty shootout. England had once again failed to go all the way in the World Cup, and Sven-Goran Eriksson's 68-game spell as England manager came to an end. Steve McLaren was appointed as Sven-Goran Eriksson's replacement to manage England in August 2006. 
with Rooney's return from injury still a work in progress, the new England manager would have his work cut out for him. I mean, he's, he's a delight to work with. I've always said that, and it's great to have him back in the squad. Um, he's bubbly, he can't wait to play. Wayne is just a football player who, get him on the training pitch, get him in front of a crowd, he just wants to play football. And we're giving him the platform to do that. And there's been much criticism about Wayne Rooney and his form. And yes, um, he's not got back into the rhythm. And that's understandable because of the amount of games that he's played over the last six months, which hasn't been many. He's had injuries, suspensions. Uh, but Wayne Rooney will explode on the scene. Don't worry, we just hope it's uh, tomorrow. On August 11, 2006, McLaren named his first England squad, dropping David Beckham. However, after some poor performances by England in 2007, and some strong ones by Beckham for Real Madrid, McLaren was forced to do an about-face and recalled the midfielder. More troubles followed, and England's failure to qualify for Euro 2008 led to McLaren being sacked by the FA. Fabio Capello was the next appointed at the helm of the England squad in December 2007. The FA revealed Capello was the number one choice and was the only man to be formally interviewed for the post, which became vacant when Steve McLaren was sacked on the 22nd of November. The Italian had signed a four and a half year deal, reportedly worth 6.6 .6 million euro a year, as England were looking to reintroduce some much needed discipline. Capello's CV is impressive and he has picked up silverware with all four clubs he's been in charge of, AC Milan, Real Madrid, Roma and Juventus. It was an appointment also welcomed by teammate Rio Ferdinand, who insisted there would be no distractions like injuries and off-field antics this time around when England play in the World Cup finals. Ironically, with Ferdinand's recent injury history, it's possible that Wayne Rooney may captain the England squad for the 2010 World Cup. Rooney's international standings to date include appearances for the Euro 2004 squad as the youngest goalscorer in competition history and regaining fitness in time for inclusion in England's 2006 World Cup side. Along with the usual media commitments and social outings with close friends, including the occasional nightclub appearance with teammate Rio Ferdinand, Rooney met his wife Colleen while they were both in their final year of secondary school. While they were dating over a period of six years, Rooney admitted to soliciting prostitution in Liverpool in 2004, claiming he was young and immature and had not quite settled down with Colleen. Married in 2008, the couple braved heavy rain to exchange vows on the Italian Riviera, the ceremony taking place at the Villa Durazzo, a 17th century palace in the resort town of Santa Margherita Ligure. The deputy mayor of Santa Margherita, who officiated the ceremony, said only a few family members were present. Details of the wedding were kept under wraps as part of a 2.7 million euro magazine deal. The couple were rumored to have spent 5.6 million on their nuptials, with OK Magazine reporting to be footing half the cost. The deputy mayor Gianni Costa said the couple, both 22, did not exchange rings. The white Marchesa wedding gown is believed to have cost 222,000 euro. After the ceremony, the couple were given a police escort in two cars with blacked out windows for the short journey to the Abbey of La Cavara, the abbey which has hosted three popes and imprisoned the French king during its 650 year history, was the setting for the Rooney's wedding reception. The wedding took place at Villa Durazzo, a marvellous villa overlooking the town. I married them at 10.30. The guests were strictly close friends and family. I haven't seen any football players. She was wearing a marvellous white dress. He was dressed more casually. It was a very special and intense ceremony. A small violin orchestra accompanied the ceremony. With the couple still happily married, Colleen recently gave birth to their first baby, a boy named Kai Wayne in early November 2009. For a man with the occasional short temper on the playing pitch, Rooney also has a compassionate side and is happy to lend his high profile, boosting the spirits of those less fortunate. On the 9th of March 2006, 
Rooney signed the largest sports book deal in publishing history with HarperCollins, who granted him a 5.5 million euro advance, plus royalties for a minimum of five books to be published over a 12 year period. The first in the series, My Story So Far, is an autobiography ghost written by Hunter Davies and was published after the World Cup. I think it, it, the idea come, come to me and, and my agents and you know um, I was happy with the idea and you know I think it, it was good to reflect on my life and you know to really put my point across and you know try and let people see that I am just a normal person. Everton manager David Moyes started a libel action against the Daily Mail over statements made in the book concerning the circumstances of Rooney's leaving Everton. For him to um, contemplate suing one of his former players, it must be quite deep. The second publication, the official Wayne Rooney Annual, was aimed at a teenage market. <music> Teammate Rio Ferdinand has become a close ally of Rooney's both on and off the pitch. He joined Manchester United in July 2002 for around 33 million euro, breaking the transfer fee record once more. He won the Premier League, his first major club honour, in a successful first season at the club. He missed a drugs test and was banned from competition for eight months. Upon his return, he established himself in the Manchester United first team and received high praise for his performances, featuring the PFA Team of the Year three times in four years. His importance to the national team was underlined in March 2008, when Ferdinand captained England for the first time. Michael Owen is a relatively new addition to the team and was handed the prize Manchester No. 7 shirt by Sir Alex Ferguson in July 2009. The former Liverpool, Real Madrid and Newcastle United striker will take his place in the attacking lineup with Wayne Rooney and Dimitar Berbatov, following Cristiano Ronaldo's world record sale for 89 million euro. One of Rooney's earliest inspirations was the legendary Bobby Charlton himself, who began to play for United's first team in 1956, and over the next two seasons gained a regular place in the team, during which time he survived the Munich air disaster of 1958. Sir Robert Bobby Charlton also won the World Cup and was named the European Footballer of the Year in 1966. I'm a, I'm a football romantic, I, I love football. He played almost all of his club football at Manchester United, where he became renowned for his attacking instincts from midfield and his ferocious long-range shot. He has scored more goals for England and United than any other player. The troubled George Best was a winger whose game combined pace, acceleration, balance, goal scoring and the ability to beat defenders. In 1968, he won the European Cup with Manchester United and was well remembered. George was one of the first celebrity footballers, but his extravagant lifestyle led to problems with alcoholism, which shortened his playing career and eventually led to his death in November 2005 at the age of 59. In his native Northern Ireland, the admiration for him is summed up by the local saying, Maradona good, Pele better, George best. While not quite in the same stratosphere as David and Victoria Beckham, or Bex and Posh as their public know them, the Roonies reside in a five million euro mansion in the village of Presbury, Cheshire, which was built by a company owned by Dawn Ward, the wife of former Sheffield United striker Ashley Ward. Rooney also owns a property in Port Charlotte, Florida. While house hunting in Cheshire after signing with Man U, Rooney spotted a pub sign that read Admiral Rodney, which he misread as Admiral Rooney. Nevertheless, he still considered it as a positive omen for his future home. With the largest sports book deal in publishing history signed with HarperCollins and his profile on and off the pitch, including endorsements and magazines vying for exclusivity on his every move, Wayne certainly has star power. 
His room with 33 million euro sign-up fee for Manchester alone was a record for a player under 20 and helped Everton, who was struggling at the time, repay loans and regain some financial stability. He has appeared on five straight UK version covers of Electronic Arts, from FIFA 06 to FIFA 10, and is in high demand for appearances through his commitments with Nike, recently adding his official endorsement to the Oregon-based manufacturer's total 90 supremacy range of football boots. On Wayne Rooney's feet, the boots seem to have a technical advantage. Wayne Rooney has agreements for over 7.1 million euro in salary from Manchester United, signing on for a transfer fee of 27 million euro, along with sponsorship contracts with Nike, Coca-Cola, EA Sports and Big Blue Tube worth in excess of 13.3 million euro. Currently, this places Wayne in seventh place on the footballer's salary list with 7.1 million euros. Lionel Messi of Barcelona tops the charts with 12 million euro. A sure sign of lasting fame is to be cast in wax, and Rooney has taken his position at Madame Tussauds. I think Wayne Rooney is the best young footballer in the world. Uh, in the, in the build-up to the World Cup, we think it was appropriate to make Wayne Rooney, especially as hopefully he's going to be England's big hope of winning the World Cup. David Beckham is among the other shiny luminaries on display, along with a slightly puzzled-looking Sven Goran Eriksson. A more lifelike Rooney was nominated for the 2005 FIFA Pro World Eleven, and was presented with a trophy to honour the occasion. Yeah, I'm delighted. You know, it's a, it's a big award for myself, and um, being in that room there with um, the amount of footballers and world-class players in there was um, brilliant. And um, to actually get up on stage and pick the awards up, it was fantastic as well. The FIFA Pro World Eleven is a team voted for by professional footballers and Wayne was happy to receive recognition from his peers. Um, I think um, I'm happy because um, obviously the professional footballers all around the world recognise recognise my game and um, I voted for me so I'm happy with that and um, you know, hopefully a few months come in the future. Wayne Rooney's list of accomplishments is impressive and continues to grow. His awards to date include BBC Sports Young Personality of the Year 2002, UEFA Euro 2004 Team of the Tournament, FIFA Pro World Young Player of the Year 2005, and PFA Team of the Year 2005-2006, to name but a few. For a young man with the ability to create something from nothing, who was regarded by Sir Alex Ferguson as the best young player he had ever seen, the future holds plenty, including possibly a long-awaited World Cup win for England. <laughs>